Hello everyone, my name is Vasily Sardakov. I'm a master search fellow at Imperial College London. I would like to present you a research project, CalPM's capability-based isolation and sharing in cloud. This is a joint project between Imperial College London, University of Otago, University of Tokyo, sponsored by UKRI Technology Innovation Institute. Let's get started. Cloud environments face a fundamental tension between isolation and sharing. On the one hand, services must be isolated to prevent attacks on each other with the cloud provider. On the other hand, the services must cross isolation border for data exchange and sharing. For example, you may allocate a data storage service, a database with market data feed, an analytics service, let's say powered by Python. The analytics service should efficiently access the data provided by storage service. If the storage service sells only a subset of data it has, the cloud environment should guarantee that the analytics service will never get access to extra data. From the point of view of the cloud provider, the collocated services can be powered by virtual machines. Virtualization provides strong isolation and has a small trusted computing base. Small TCB reduces attack possibilities with adversary. The TCB here is a hypervisor, which can be very small, let's say a microkernel. At the same time, the fundamental idea of virtualization is that there is no red pill, and you need to use virtual network devices and this PP stack for communication. It's very excessive. The data is in memory already. All what you need is to give reliable access to it. Instead, we copy data via the stack. And even if you expose the hypervisor to the application, there are heavyweight transitions. In the case of containers, we have lightweight isolation. And we can reuse existing kernel RPC primitives. They're relatively fast, easy to use, but there is another problem, a large, shared trusting computing base. The kernel is the lowest common denominator over all containers and the host system. This means that your REST API application has a USB driver in the DCB because sysadmin needs to log onto the server, or some other deprecated drivers or buggy file system that you don't even use. As you can see, in both cases, it's challenging to provide efficient data sharing with small trusting computing base. One of the root causes of this problem is the memory management unit, which we use as a base technology for isolation and sharing. Indeed, MMU is privileged entity, and if you want to manipulate pages and access memory in different other spaces, you should interact with the privileged intermediary, the kernel. The kernel is always involved in IPC, which leads to a large shared trusted computing base and expensive transition calls. Yes, MMU allows us to share data between isolated entities, but only the page granularity. This means that you should think twice before remapping of pages. What if you accidentally expose data that shouldn't be exposed? Perhaps we need something different for isolation and sharing. And in this project, we look towards the hardware memory capabilities with the Cherry architecture. Cherry is a hybrid capability architecture that blends architectural capabilities with conventional and new based architectures. Capabilities in Cherry are fat pointers with built-in bounds and attributes. They are used instead of ordinary pointers. Bounds restrict memory that can be accessed via the capability, while attributes, for example, permissions, impose restrictions on operations with the capability. You can use it on this data or code capability, or you can disallow to use it to load other capabilities. The Cherry architecture guarantees that you can't construct a capability from arbitrary sequence of bytes. You can only derive it from another valid capability. For that, we use the capability of instructions, but not the shared intermediary like the kernel. A new capability can be the same smaller, both in terms of temporary covers and attributes. In this work, we build a cloud stack using Cherry capabilities as a technology for isolation and sharing. We want to address issues of existing stacks based on virtual machines and containers. Therefore, building a cloud stack will face the following challenges. First of all, the stack should support capability unaware code. Pure capability code when all pointers and capabilities are definitely our future, but it was important and people usually don't like to change things that work. Secondly, the stack should provide small TCB OS functionality. We don't want to rely on code we don't use. And thirdly, it also should enable efficient capability based IPC primitives. The capabilities allow us to access memory in zero copy manner. How can we use this in combination with legacy software and native code? And we build such a cloud stack. The key element of the stack are intervisor and cup VMs, CVM in short. The latter is an interprocess VM-like abstraction. It includes the kernel in the form of library operating system and programs. Cup VMs share a single address space of intervisor and use cherry capabilities for isolation and sharing. Cup VMs support capability unaware applications. Existing applications can freely run in the isolated way. 
Copy game support existing OS functionality while keeping the shared trusting ability but small. Each application has its own independent deprived kernel in the form of library operating system. Cloud VMs provide efficient IPC interfaces to untrusted applications that can use them for efficient data sharing, CUP files, or to remote code invocation, CUP call. You can put a component of your application into a separate CUP VM and invoke its methods. Let's look how we build CUP VMs and begin with our first challenge, isolation capability on our software. But prior to that, we should look deeper into the Cherry APIs. There are three Cherry APIs. Firstly, there is a pure capability ABI where all pointers are capabilities. You need to port some software to make everything work, particularly if you have low level system functionality, such as your own memory allocator. You should also care about alignment the paddings and data structures because pointers are twice fatter. The second and the third ABI is hybrid and native. In essence, are the same. You can run native code without changes. You can also combine native code with capability aware instructions and make it hybrid. In other words, you will selectively benefit from the use of capabilities, but you don't need to port legacy software. You can also compartmentalize hybrid code with Cherry. In Cherry, native code is relative to two default capabilities, which are part of the CPU context. Native instructions are constrained by those capabilities, and the capabilities can cover a small part of process address space. At the same time, if you have a capability that points memory outside the default capabilities, you can directly access this memory using capability aware instructions. In other words, Cherry can be a base for isolation mechanisms and for IPC primitives. It allows to compartmentalize a piece of hybrid code, but it gives mechanisms to escape the compartment in a controlled way. Now let's come back to native software. Legacy software expects a POSIX compatible environment and well following some cloud based practices, for example, deploying on virtual machines and Docker containers. CopVMs provide this. The application with all dependencies is shipped by a user in the form of disk image with binaries, for example, export, exported Docker container. Intervisor is a privilege service that allocates memory inside its own address space for CopVM according to the resource file, deploys the init utility here, and this utility loads a user service. In the prototype, we use MuscleLibc, which is deployed together with init. Now the second challenge. The program expects OS functionality, for example, Linux compatible environment, and CupVMs provide this. The functionality should have small trust in computing base, and this is true when the functionality includes only necessary components, again, no device drivers or deprecated file systems, and when they have a small attack surface. It's a large code base and shouldn't add new flows. It should be separated from your own code. That's why we use the privileged library operating system, LCAL in our prototype, and deploy it inside each cup VM. The library operating system can be bespoke for special applications and provide necessary interfaces, components, mechanisms. It's very flexible. In essence, the library OS should be shipped by the user. The mechanisms that can't be provided by the library operating system, such as I.O. access or creation of execution context, provided by Travisor. We isolate the program from the library operating system, and we isolate library operating system with the program from Intervisor and other CUP VMs. Each isolation layer is cherry compartment defined by default capabilities. We use syscalls and host calls interfaces for transition between isolation layers. And finally, the IPC interfaces. As we discussed, they should be efficient, and they are efficient when they are not shared, exclusive, and what is more important, they don't include an intermediary, at least in the critical path. The interface should have well-known API, ultimately we want to support legacy applications, and such interface should be available for capability on our code. Our code is native, but we want to benefit from the use of capabilities. How to do this? Cup VMs provide two basic IPC mechanisms. Using cup file, you can access memory located in another cup VM. When you read or write the system object via ordinary system call, you actually read or write remote memory provided by capability without the involvement of the shared intermediary. And cup call. Cup call allows you to call a function located inside another cup VM. This is IPC mechanism involves intervisor. Combining cup call and cup file, which are in essence notification mechanism and asynchronous data copy mechanisms, we create a stream-oriented interface called cup stream. In this mechanism, one side registers some receive buffer and use poll to get a notification when the other side sends data and doesn't know the location of the destination. The buffer will be selected from the registered buffer on delivery. And finally, this design allows us to combine native and hybrid code. Programs are native, capability unaware, 
while system objects are implemented using capability aware instruction. The separation between the ABIs and the Cisco interface. This design not only separates native and capability aware code, but also enables simple revocation of shared capabilities. More about this in the paper. We built a prototype using Cherry Risk 5 64, evaluated it using Quimo and FPGA boards provided by Amazon F1 instances. At the software side, we used Cherry BSD as a host system LK and Muscle as software base for Cup VMs. We also used Sci 5, Hi 5, and Match boards. They don't have Cherry support, but enable evaluation of programs on the multi core platform. We also used to generate Docker images and mentioned we have full compatibility with native software. We run several services that store and process data, including Python, SQLite, Redis. We also created multi tier microservice deployment. Everything is in the paper. The question we ask in the evaluation do we have any performance benefit when we're using capability based IPC primitives? In this benchmark, we use one process, two threads where it's relevant, and transfer buffers of variable size from two kilobytes to four megabytes. We measure the speed of this operation. As mechanisms, we compare basic primitives, memory copy, and a combination of memory copy plus memory map, mechanisms provided by CUP VMs, CUP stream, and CUP file, and a bunch of mechanisms provided by Cherry BSD pipes, Unix sockets, TCP sockets. X is size, Y is performance, and this is the performance of memcopy and CUP file. In essence, CUP file is a CUP based memory copy plus several syscalls, and performance should be close or the same, maybe somewhere in infinity. Here we can see CUP file is slower than memcopy for 6%, which is very fast, in fact, when you don't need synchronization, you can access memory inside another CUP VM with close to memcopy speed. This is CUP stream, which is in essence CUP file plus synchronization, and we pay a lot for synchronization. Maybe also because it's a single core CPU, especially when we compare cup file versus pipes. Pipes are better for memory chunks less than one to megabytes. This is kind of expected. The synchronization is very costly, and pipes benefit from the privileged execution, while cup stream needs to enter and leave the kernel Docker logs. Maybe user level tracking can shoot this point. Local TCP MMAP. Uh, we also use two processes instead of a single one, and all of them below 3.6 megabytes per second, which is very slow. In relative values, CUP files are more than two times faster than pipes, the fastest legacy interface. CUP stream approximately 50% faster than pipes for big memory chunks, which we consider the primary application. Ultimately, it's a data processing service. Let's recap. There are tasks in the cloud that require strong isolation, efficient data sharing, and small TCP environments at the same time. For modern clouds, this combination of requirements is quite challenging. In the case of containers, we can have efficient mechanisms to access the sharing data, but they come together with large sharing trust in computing base. In the case of VMs, we may have small TCB, but there is a significant communication overhead. The root cause of this problem is MMU. It's responsible for isolation and sharing, and it's a privileged entity that works the page granularity. In this project, we present CUP VMs, a new VM-like abstraction. CUP VMs share a single address space and use memory capabilities for isolation and sharing. CUP VMs have small shared trust in computing base. Each CUP VM has its own namespace. And also, CUP VMs has efficient IPC primitives based on capabilities. Sources are available. Thank you very much. I, together with my colleagues, will be happy to answer your questions. Bye.